Entrobius vermicularis. Again, in Greek, enteron means intestine, bios means life, vermicularis means small worm. Entrobius vermicularis, as the name itself suggests, is the large intestinal nematode which usually resides in the cecum appendix and the adjacent parts of the ascending colon. It was previously called as oxyuris vermicularis, the term oxyuris indicating the sharp tail which is a common feature of the female adult worm. From this term, the name pinworm is also derived. The other common terms for Entrobius vermicularis other than the pinworm is threadworm or seatworm. Unlike the normal helminthic infections which are usually prevalent in people who are in the developing countries, Entrobius vermicularis is far more commoner in the affluent nations or in the developed countries, especially in the cold and temperate regions. The adult worm is short, white and fusiform with pointed ends looking like bits of white thread. The mouth is surrounded by three wing-like cuticular expansions called cervical ala, which are transversely striated. The esophagus has a double bulb structure. This is a unique feature of the adult worm. The male worm measures about 2 to 5 millimeters in length and is around 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters in thick. The posterior end is curved and carries a prominent copulatory spicule. The female worm is slightly larger again, around 8 to 13 millimeters in length and 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters in thickness. The posterior end is thin pointed and pin like. The vulva is usually located just in front of the middle third of the body and opens into a single vagina leading to paired uterus over oviducts and ovaries. A gravid female worm usually is virtually filled with distended uteri carrying thousands of eggs. Entrobius vermicularis passes its entire life cycle in the human host and does not have any intermediate host. The male worm is seldom seen as it does not migrate. Usually the worm, male worm dies after mating and is passed in the feces. Whereas the female worm following fertilization migrates down the colon to the rectum. At night, when the host is in bed, the worm comes out through the anal canal and cross about, crawls about on the perianal and perineal skin to lay sticky eggs. A single worm can lay around 5,000 to 17,000 eggs. When the eggs are all laid, the worm dies or gets crushed by the host during scratching. If you look at the egg, they are non-bile stained, they are colorless. It has got a characteristic shape by being elongated, ovoid and flattened on one side and convex on the other side. This shape is classically described as a plano convex shape. An egg measures 50 to 60 micrometers in length 
and 20 to 30 micrometers in width. The egg shell is double layered and relatively thick. The outer albuminous layer of the egg makes it stick to each other and also it gets adherent to the clothing and other objects that the person usually wears. The egg contains a tadpole shaped coiled embryo which is fully formed but it becomes infectious only about 6 hours after being deposited on the skin. Under cool moist condition this egg remains viable for about 2 weeks. So if you look at the life cycle the female gravid worm crawls out of the anus into the perianal and perineal skin to lay the sticky eggs. The worm may retreat into the anal canal and come out again to lay more eggs. The worm may wander into the vulva, vagina and even into uterus and fallopian tubes reaching as far as up to the peritoneum. So, when the eggs containing these infected larvae are swallowed due to auto-infection, they hatch out in the intestine. They molt in the ileum and enter the cecum where they mature into adults. The total duration from the time the eggs are ingested to the development of the gravid female ready to lay eggs is around 2 weeks to 2 months. Please remember that there are two modes of infection. The first mode is called as the auto-infection. Here, the source of infection is an infected person. Thousands of eggs are laid on the perineal skin or the perianal skin. The scratching transfers them to the fingers of the patient or in the dirt beneath the nails and they are carried to the patient's own mouth during eating or nail biting and to contacts either directly or through food and fomites. These eggs also survive in the dust for some days and get airborne during sweeping or bed making. The second mode of infection is called as retrofection. This is a retrograde infection where the eggs laid on the perianal skin hatch there itself and the larvae migrate back to the anus and up to the colon to the cecum to develop into the adults. An adult worm has got a lifespan of only about 2 weeks to 2 months. The infection should automatically get eliminated after that period. But if you look at the clinical manifestations of this particular worm infection, the infection mostly occurs in the children more commonly in the females than in the males. This worm produces intense irritation and pruritus of the perianal and the perineal area, especially when it crawls out during night to lay the eggs. This leads to scratching and excoriation of the skin around the anal canal or the anus as the worm migrates out into the uh, at night, it disturbs sleep, leading to nocturnal aneurysis. The worm wandering into the vagina and vulva causes irritation and a mucoid discharge. It can also cause symptoms of chronic salpingitis, vulvovaginitis, 
and peritonitis sometimes the worm is also found in the surgically removed appendix and therefore has uh, been claimed to be responsible for appendicitis the other large intestinal nematode the whip worm also can cause appendicitis as i already mentioned the mode of infection is auto infection or retro infection or retrograde infection as the person gets agitated at night during sleep sometimes as medical professionals we may mistake it to be some central nervous manifestation especially when the patient is in the icu setting therefore a pinworm infestation usually should be suspected when there is a history of perianal pruritus the diagnosis of pinworm infection depends on the demonstration of the eggs or the adult worms now what is more important in the lab diagnosis is the way or the method in which the samples are collected there are two ways for collecting the stool sample and usually a series of 4 to 6 consecutive uh, samples may be ne- necessary as the female worms migrate intermittently ideally the sample should be collected when the chance of egg deposition is more especially late in the evening or when the patient has been sleeping for several hours in the night or early in the morning this worm sometimes may also be found in the undergarments and also found lying in the buttock area especially in infected children so the two ways are you can either use a cellophane tape or you can use a nih swab cellophane tape are is usually applied over the perianal region in the morning especially before the child goes for bath this tape is then applied onto the clear glass slide and then observed under microscope for the detection of the pin worm x so the infective and the diagnostic stage is your plano convex non bile stained egg in the nih swab method nih stands for national institute of health and in the usa because this particular method was devised there the nih swab is basically a glass rod attached to a cellophane tape by a rubber band the other end of the glass rod is fixed by a rubber stopper and kept in a test tube the cellophane part of the glass rod is rolled over the perineal and perianal skin area to collect the sample once the tape is transferred to the slide microscopic examination is done to detect the entrobius eggs for treatment again mebendazole albendazole and pyrantel pamoate can be administered mebendazole is given 100 mg od albendazole 400 mg od and pyrantel pamoate 11 mg per kg please remember that it is very essential to even treat the household members to eliminate asymptomatic reservoirs of potential reinfection total prevention is not possible or realistic as the transmission is so common due to the auto infection therefore 
personal hygiene must be strictly advised to all the patients including proper washing of the blood, uh, bed clothes keeping the nails short and clean and frequent hand washing thank you